had the day off again, and so I decided to run this uh, modular freezer unit in a uh, controlled and planned manner. Uh, I did so uh, maintaining the glycol bucket that is inside this box right there, uh, propylene glycol in there with water, uh, maintain that between 0 and 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, once it would reach 0 degrees Fahrenheit, I'd shut the compressor off, let the circulating fan inside run, and observe the temperature drop inside. Now, I was uh, freezing some uh, some water here, give it a little bit of load, um, and what I found, so we're up to about 20 degrees inside right now, it was around 12 before I opened the door, um, I cataloged everything and, uh, and wrote it out. So I started at about 40 degrees here this morning at about uh, what, 730 or something, and uh, dropped the uh, temperature in the glycol bucket down to zero, and then allowed it to rise and drop and rise and drop, and you can see it does it in a very consistent manner. Uh, it's usually uh, off for about an hour and 10 minutes, and then on for about 30 to 40 minutes, so something like that. And then the line up here, you can see the temperature dropped below freezing and stayed right in the high 20s most of the day. Uh, I took a mass of water out right there and then allowed it to uh, continue to fall. Then I took another mass out right there. and You can see it plummet. I let the temperature drop below zero uh, just for fun. So, um, observations. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the compressor is too big. I've mentioned that before. It's a quarter horsepower compressor and the fact that I'm only able to run it for about a half an hour for every, you know, hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes or something is, uh, is kind of an issue because uh, in a normal freezer you would expect to uh, uh, the compressor unit to continue to run until the box got down to operating temperatures. But since I don't want to let this thing continue to run and plummet that coolant temperature down so low, I only allow it to run uh, until it gets down to zero and then allow the coolant to continue doing the cooling work. So I'm only getting about 30 or 40 minutes worth of cooling work done every hour and a half or so. Um, granted, some of that cooling work is being stored in the in the coolant, um, and then there's the fact that I have a limited amount of surface area on the bucket, and uh, and the frosting, of course, occurs, which also limits the amount of heat transfer that I get. So there's a lot of cooling power still stored inside that bucket that's going to remain cold for some time to come. Um, another issue that I have with this is you can I can physically feel it's quite cold on the outside of this box. Um, this box was a thermoelectric refrigerator and uh, was never intended for such low temperatures. So there's a lot of heat leakage through it. Um, I'm probably going to uh, run it again a bit tomorrow. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different with it. I'm going to pull the glycol bucket out and just run the coil directly and uh, observe that effect. I'm expecting the coil to freeze up pretty rapidly and the temperature in it to, to plummet. Um, probably going to get better refrigerating effect, or, or, or really I'm going to be able to drop the temperature of the box down lower and do more cooling faster, um, but that coil is going to still freeze up pretty pretty bad. Um, uh, again, the large compressor, if I go to a smaller compressor, it will uh, cool that bucket more slowly, but it'll probably run more consistently and for longer periods of, of run time, and I would expect to get a little better performance out of it. Um, so that's exactly what I'm going to do with that small compressor down there. Um, <clears throat> My opinion on making a modular freezing unit is starting to change a bit. Um, as much as I'd like to get away from the use of the fan, um, without the use of some kind of a, a baffle orientation that would allow uh, hot air to circulate with cold air and sinking and whatnot, you know, hole in the top, kind of a hole in the bottom and, and an orientation like that, I don't see how I really get away from the fan. Um, also, with the glycol bucket, <clears throat> Um, that makes it very difficult to defrost because if you shut the machine down, that coolant is going to hold that cooling uh, capacity for some time. So that is kind of an issue. So um, what I may be doing is moving towards just focusing on a refrigerator at this point. Um, it would be much easier. The glycol bucket is uh, or pan or whatever I end up using is going to uh, work pretty well for that in my, my opinion. Um, I can focus on baffles and things like that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm still going to go for the smaller compressor and uh, continue more or less with the uh, the uh, machine as I have it now. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot to be learned here. And uh, I'd like to get away from this nonsense here. I did get a temperature controller I bought on eBay. Get it in a couple of days. And uh, that'll you know serve as my thermostat. 
And then as far as temperature logging itself, um, I'm researching and trying to find a uh, USB uh, temperature logger, multi-channel, that I can use these uh, uh, thermocouples with that, uh, that pin set on them. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun, really, um, because if I go to a different style of, of connector, then I won't be able to utilize my uh, embedded thermocouples in the refrigerant lines as much. Uh, something else I'm going to do is, uh, in another iteration of this machine down the road, I'm going to eliminate some of these flare fittings uh, where I can. Um, getting some leaking issues with it. Um, probably going to get a gas, uh, a um, <clears throat> hydrocarbon detector, a um, gas leak detector um, to help me nail down some of these very, very, very small leaks. Another idea I've been floating around is just to immerse the whole thing, you know, <laughs> mine is this box over here, in a bucket of water and uh, under pressure and look for bubbles that way. Um, <clears throat> But, um, yeah, I mean, all in all, it was a, it was an interesting day. It was educational. Um, still holding it about negative 2.6 there in the, in the bucket. It was down about negative 6 or 7. Um, it should hold that pretty well overnight. Um, in the future, if I do decide to continue with freezing work, I'll get a better box. Um, this is, boy, it's, it's nice and cool. <laughs> um, definitely need something with at least twice that amount of insulation in it, but... Uh, Anyway, if you watched this much and you watched any other videos, you already know. It's R290, barbecue grade, um, capillary tube in the back there, air-cooled condenser, uh, quarter horsepower compressor. That's, uh, that's about it. There's not much, not much to it. So there will be more videos down the road. Thanks for watching.